Hello, and we're back. So this is How to Be Productive, Developing on a Mac. I'm Kendra Havens. I'm a program manager on .NET. And I'm Michaela Hutchinson. Um, I'm also on the .NET PM team. We have some so cool stuff to get into. OK, yeah. so we don't really have a lot of slides. This is the general idea of what we're going to talk about, but we're mostly going to be geeking out. So I'll go ahead and flip over to my demo app that I'm going to use. If you want to actually follow along with me, you can download this app. Uh, so it's on uh, Kinderhaven slash Mac Productivity, or you can go to aka.ms slash Mac Features uh, 2019. Just kidding, sorry. <laughs> Mac Features 2019. There we go. And that'll take you right to a GitHub page that you can go ahead and clone and download. So this app is all of the most recent productivity stuff that we've got into Visual Studio Max. So tons of code fixes and refactorings that we'll talk about. And we're also going to just cover the things we most love. Yep. There's Should be lots fun. Of, yeah. There's lots of super cool stuff that we'll cover. OK. So now that we've all downloaded um, some code, we can actually get started. So the first thing I wanted to call out is um, toggling a line comment. That's command slash. So you can put your cursor anyone, anywhere on a line. You can also select entire blocks to comment. So command slash, and it'll comment the entire block. Um, we didn't have toggle like it as a toggle command. I think on mm -hmm. Visual Studio on Windows, we mm -hmm. had control KC and control KV, and you had to remember that. But why not just have it uh, be one keyboard shortcut and only use one place in your memory? We're always thinking about mm -hmm. optimizing memory. <laughs> so another one that's really popular is multi-cursor. Um, we have actually had this for like over a year, probably. Um, yeah, it, it came as part of the um, new editor where we ported the editor from Windows to Mac. So we got a lot of the great features from the Windows oh, um, version. I didn't realize that's when this came over. That's yep. sweet. So all you need to do is hit um, Control-Alt-Click, and you can click in different parts of your IDE. And so you can see on my screen, yay, multi-cursor, or multi-carat is also what it's called. Um, yeah, people absolutely love that. Um, we've been able to, let's see, is it alt to drag for a while? So if you wanted to add comments that are all in mm. the same line, here is my comment. You've been able to do that. But actually being able to click around in different places, um, one thing that I actually just learned we could do, let's see, control alt, click. I got to be careful I'm not using the Windows keyboard <laughs> shortcuts, is you can actually um, go around with arrow keys. Oh. within your selection, oh, which I, I did not know, know you could I didn't do. Know that. So if I hold down like shift option and I mm -hmm. select more and more, it uh, will actually stay in line with how many cursors that mm -hmm. I have, which is super, super helpful if you're editing a bunch of different lines. Um, OK, so speaking of like shift selections, you actually taught me this just like last week, <laughs> which I didn't realize I was doing wrong. Um, so you can, I guess, expand your selection by holding down Alt, Shift, and up arrows. And if you use the down arrow, it'll go back to your line. So it'll go up to the line that you're on, or like more of that actual statement than up to the method body, and then the method name, and then the whole class mm -hmm. um, within there. And I, can you keep going, and it'll do namespace? Um, yes, Let's I think see. so. I think so. It's Alt, Shift, up. There we go. Yep. And then the whole file. Yep. So it's yeah, it's super useful if you want to say um, extract uh, extract an expression to a local function or something like that. Oh sure, actually I think I have that. Don't skip ahead on me. <laughs> actually, I will. <laughs> it's a good idea. So Alt Shift, and I can select. Um, oh, I meant to just do this code block. So let's say I hit Alt Enter. I can now extract a single operation to a local function. Very cool, and that's. That's only in the preview, function. right? Yes, only in preview. So um, this is actually extracting to a local function is an example of one of the code fixes that we most recently got in. So this is um, only in like Visual Studio Update 16.5 Preview 2, and it's only in Visual for Mac Update, hold on, 8.4.5 8 Preview. 8.5? 8 8 hold on, what do I have installed? 
8.5 preview. Yes. Sorry, I threw in that four. Take out that four, just 8.5 preview. <laughs> Pretty sweet. Um, so speaking, I've already listed out lots of different key bindings. Mm -hmm. So yes, that was a small sampling of the key bindings, but there's a lot more where that came from. Um, so, so if we switch over to Michaela's yes. machine, we'll see more uh, of how to set your key bindings. So, of course, you can find all the key bindings in, in the menus, um, but there's a lot of key bindings that you can't actually find in the menus. Uh, let me zoom out. So if you go into pre preferences, which itself has a key binding, which is command comma, yeah. you can go into the key bindings panel um, here, and you can um, you can change the key bindings. So if you don't like one of the, one of the existing key bindings, you can just go ahead and, and 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 change that. So if you wanted to add your own key binding for find extension methods, for example, you would just click that, click in edit binding, um, type something like I know Command Shift E, for example, and then apply. And now if you do that, it's going to run the find extension methods command for you. But there's a whole load of commands in here. You can see it's a, yeah, it's a long, long, long list. A lot of them yep. like, aren't assigned. That key binding column is mm -hmm. blank. So it's just discovering commands that we've hidden in the IDE that you could actually be using, but they're not even in like menus. Yes, yeah, some, some of them are in menus. Some of them exist and have key bindings. And some of them exist and don't have key bindings. So you, but you can find those. They're all kind of like advanced ones. But if you really want to optimize your workflow for those kind of very specific operations. Um, and you can search those, of course. Like if I wanted to find all the key bindings that affect carrots, for example, you can filter down. Um, it shows you your conflicts if you have commands that conflict with, with, with each other. Um, and uh, if you just want to make it behave like Visual Studio for Windows um, or Xcode or, or Rider, for example, there are built-in schemes that let you automatically switch over to use all the keys from that, um, from that app. Which I really should be trying out, because otherwise my fingers are getting really confused. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, there are a bunch of places where we've tried to make it the same on both, on both Windows and Mac or across um, or with uh, Visual Studio Code, for example, um, but those don't always those don't always work together. Like things collide; they collide with the way that things work on Mac, for example. Um, so we kind of had to tweak a few things just to make them fit to get into a coherent scheme. So those aren't exactly, but but they definitely give you things like a lot more familiar. Definitely. Um, yeah, so. So I noticed I'm so <laughs> jealous of how you can search your key bindings. Um, you can do that in Visual Studio for Mac, but we use some actually odd syntax. Like if you get one character wrong, it's not a very smart, like you can't fuzzy search, you can't add spaces, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, there's some really good search experiences in Visual Studio for Mac. Um, yes, so that's not the only place you can search for commands. You can use the global search up here, which if you ever forget that key binding, it's right there. It's always visible. It's command period. Way to make me feel bad when I forget <laughs> it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of gray, gray, so it's kind of faint, you know. Yeah. You, it's you, you can, you it's can, good. you can miss it. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so you just do command period and you can type. So I could type um, you know, invert, for example, uh, invert, for example, and we're going to see that here we have a couple of methods um, found in our solution, um, and it tells us where those were found. And you can also um, you can also use this to kick off a package search if you want to add a a NuGet package um, that would actually op open the NuGet package manager with that search pre filled out, or you can use that to start a, a, a find in files. But you can also um, use that to search. It doesn't just search for methods, but you can also search for files and for commands. So those commands that you can't access, um, those commands that you can't, um, that you would need to assign a key binding, you can also access them if you just figure out what they're called and just type the name of it. Um, like for example, show errors here. For example, you click on that, it's going to open the errors pad. 
Sure. Um, so um, yeah, that's that's super easy. So you can just do like command period, errors, and then. Yeah. But if you want to make sure that you're going to get specifically a command, because you might have a file called errors, for example, or a type called errors, um, there are little shortcuts that you can use. So I can do C colon, and that will limit it down to just commands. Or you can do T colon, and that means just types, or M colon is just members, and F colon is just files. Uh, if you forget what those are, um, you can actually, um, there's a little menu Ooh. where that will actually um, fill you out the, with the long form version. Um, you just need the first character, but that's kind of being a bit more ex explicit. And there are also key bindings that will fill those out for you, like Command Shift T jumps straight there with type already there. So Command Shift T, you can go straight searching for types without having to type type. Very nice. So I love how this sort of global search experience has been like becoming more and more a thing in the Visual Studio family of products. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. One 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 specific thing um, that I like to do there is to assign a custom key key binding, Command Shift period to search for commands because that matches the command oh. palette. In, in VS Code. Oh, nice. Yeah, so exactly. We're kind of stealing from the command palette in VS Code. I'm actually not sure who had it first. <laughs> reading your expression, I bet Visual Studio for Mac had a global search before anybody. Um, no? We've had it for a long time. I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know who came up with this first. Not um, to be competitive, yeah. but um, it is actually amazing that in <laughs> this uh, family of developers, we can actually, since there's, we're really expanding the diversity of our ecosystem with targeting different operating systems and even working with a ton of different like languages that VS Code does. Mm -hmm. um, and we can kind of steal the really smart things that we find with all of these new developers coming in, and then we get to populate them across mm -hmm. our whole family. So global search is one of those. I think a lot of, actually toggle line comment was also mm -hmm. one of those. I think we at least got it because people used Visual Studio Code and they're like, hey, why don't you just have this toggle experience anymore? And mm -hmm. we're like, oh, yeah, that, that would be smart. We should put it in. And we only had it one way because, hey, that's what was decided a few years ago. And I don't know, yeah. it's good to have the new kids on the block telling us to fix our things. Yeah, well, there's kind of cross <laughs> pollination in all directions because you know there's good ideas everywhere so if we can take all of those ideas and bring them together um, then we end up with the best experience oh, that we can have it's beautiful this is why I like doing talks with Michaela she understands me um, <laughs> okay so if we switch back over to my machine I wanted to talk a little bit about our code style and editor severity that we're now um, completely piping into the Visual Studio for Mac IDE. So you can kind of see I'm getting a suggestion on this variable here, and it's saying, hey, you should be using an explicit type instead of var. Something that we recently added uh, was being able to edit the severity at which uh, code fixes appear and code style violations appear. So if I go into this code style, first I can actually set what I want the style to appear as, but I can also edit the severity and say, let's make it a warning instead of a suggestion. Um, oh, it looks like I'm trying to do a rename operation. That was not intentional. Let's see. Can I save? I'll exit out of a couple of things and reopen. Save. Do, 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 do. Now it's going to load. Man, I should have tried this while you were talking. That would have been <laughs> smarter. <laughs> hey, there it is. OK, so I'm let's still getting see. the explicit type versus var. And let's see if I can now set the severity to be a warning. Yay, so now I'm getting this green squiggle. So it's basically being able to um, be a little bit more opinionated about mm -hmm. how you customize what code style and how it appears in the IDE. And you might have noticed when I was editing this to um, can reconfigure my code style severity, I was actually, let's see, there, I was getting a preview pane. So this is actually, what is this showing me? Um, this is showing me what lines I'm actually going to be editing in my editor config. So if you all were here with me in the room, this is the time I would ask the audience, how many of you have heard of the editor config? How many of you use it in your team code style to manage um, per repo uh, code style and suggestions? By show of hands. We okay. Should do, we should do a poll on Twitter. <laughs> we should do a poll on Twitter. That would be better for virtual events. Um, so 
Editor Config was a uh, tool that existed in the ecosystem apart from .NET for a pretty long time before we adopted it and made our own .NET code style rules using their format. So we did not create another competing stack. We used one that was already there. Um, so it's basically a file, it's a .editor config file that lives at the root of your repo. So it travels along with your source code, it lives with your entire repository, and it basically documents all of the code style options that you're using. So if I actually go to my var options, you can see where I've edited it to be warning now um, instead of uh, what it used to be, which was a suggestion. So this is, what, this is the thing that is going to be updated um, whenever I make those changes and edit my severity. And you can apply a bunch of um, like f basic formatting things. And uh, so some code styles, so some things like having your curly brace on the same line or on a new line, you can apply that kind of thing through format document. So format document is a command line tool. Actually, I'll go ahead and show you guys where you can get it. Format document, Visual Studio, GitHub. Let's see if it comes up. Hold on, usually I search GitHub and then format document. <laughs> Wait a second. Global tool. Did I misspell something? Oh, there we go. Oh, I should have put .NET format. That's what I was oh, getting yes. wrong. Sorry, it is called format document in Visual Studio that was built in. And then when we created the global tool, we used um, .NET format because mm -hmm. .NET is like the yeah. command and format would be the verb that you would yeah. use in the CLI. So um, you can install this as a NuGet package. Global tools are um, basically NuGet packages that you can run as console apps from anywhere in the command line on your computer. So you can quickly, really quickly create um, .NET tools using this. You, all you need to do is run .NET tool install, and that'll be dash d .NET dash format. And a really cool, so I could run this from the command line, mm -hmm. but a really cool thing that you can do specifically in VS for Mac is hook up command line arguments or external applications and all kinds of stuff into the menu commands of Visual Studio for Mac. So mm -hmm. here I've created a couple um, format document commands, and I can also pass in even different arguments. So if I only wanted to format on the current file that I'm in, I could choose that command. Um, so it's super easy to do. So I'll go ahead and run format file, uh, which will only format the open file that I have. And it should be printing to, yeah, my application output that it's formatting. And when I click back in here, <laughs> here, why don't I try format document for the whole solution? There we go. So it fixed all of where my curly braces were. Very cool. Pretty sweet. Yeah. Um, so other things that you can hook up in tools, what were we talking about that we loved? You, you could hook up all sorts of things, like having Com com command line tools is super useful, so you don't have to open a t t terminal and run those commands. You can pass in, you can pass context like your current file, um, but you can also use it to open helper tools. So if you use um, Git Kraken, for example, or GitHub Desktop oh, yeah. for um, doing your your source control, um, you could put it in that menu so that um, you don't have to keep it in your dock, or you could um, like launch it from the commands um, from the command search. So yeah. just make that super smooth and integrated into your workflow. Because I think we recommend we use a few different tools. Like I know mm -hmm. um, Azure Data Studio mm -hmm. was also one of the ones where we recommend you use those standalone apps as opposed to, to sort of just um, supplement your Visual yep. Studio for Mac experience. And if there's already an amazing experience on like GitHub for desktop, then we'll go use those tools. Yeah, pretty sweet. OK, so one thing I wanted to talk about here was um, tabs versus spaces in indentation. We were talking about this as we were preparing for this talk, and we just feel like we need to give an update to the mm -hmm. community. So it is a very contentious topic. It is a contentious and we'll topic. we probably start a flame war just by having That's this conversation. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> 
so um, it has been brought, I think it's it's kind of a growing movement, developer tools, that tabs are way more accessible than spaces. Because mm -hmm. people who need to use um, different fonts, are everything is going to be rendered differently. Mm -hmm. So as we were talking about editor config, we basically adopted editor config because we felt that code style need to be, needed to be managed per repo. Mm -hmm. And that was an evolution from our original thought that code style was managed per individual by like an IDE that applied everything. So we're, we moved from the IDE to an editor config. And now that we're realizing we really need to keep everything accessible to make our community as effective as it can be and as diverse and welcoming as it can be, um, tabs are actually a really good option in a lot mm -hmm. of cases yeah. for this. So this is one of the few instances that maybe the next step in our evolution, it is going to mean um, your individual ID will go back to overriding certain aspects of editor config that are um, better visually for the people using it. Yeah, there's kind of a, dis a distinction between the settings that affect the code that you're writing and the settings that affect how that is shown to you. And the settings that affect how that's shown to you should be a personal preference, but you always want the code formatting to be consistent so other developers working on the same repo get the same style and you don't end up fighting in, in merge commits and stuff yeah. like that. You kind of think if we had been able to do this from the beginning, like I think we've we've talked about a long time having source code look one way, um, but display in mm -hmm. a different way, just based on how the person wanted to see it. But yeah. like having the the that visual never mm -hmm. is pushed to the repository yeah. to be like an ideal. It's been mm -hmm. surfaced before. Um, so we're learning. Yeah. I wonder yeah. how many fights we could have avoided. Yeah. Well, you, you can do that with with tab width. Um, I'm pretty sure right now, if you if you didn't set a tab width in your editor config and you set it to use tab, it would still use your your preferences. Oh, nice. I might be wrong, but I have to double check. Yeah. Sounds really cool. So we're getting there. Um, but yeah, what, what one of the common arguments that we hear for not using tabs is you can't align things. Mm -hmm. But the solution to that is surprisingly simple. It's just use both tabs and spaces. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Gauntlet thrown. So tabs, indentation, <laughs> and then spaces on top of that to align stuff. Yeah. Or or following it in the column? Yeah. OK. This is a hill I'll die on. <laughs> cool. Anyway, <laughs> just throwing it out there. <laughs> Gauntlet thrown. Really cool. OK, so oh, one last thing I wanted to show. Um, oh, two last things are, yeah, we're doing good on time, <laughs> <laughs> are um, file headers. So oh, so much of this preparing for this was like, what am I jealous of of VS for Mac that I don't have in VS for Windows every day? And one of them was file header management, which we are working on. And that is in, let's see, I wrote this down, um, preferences, source code. There we go. So you can actually choose what file header header is automatically inserted at the top when you like create a new file, um, and you actually get a code fix to add this to mm -hmm. the top of all many of your files. Um, so you can select things. I think I have a custom. Um, oh yeah, because we had MIT, but I deleted it because I do not want to include my email or the copyright year year. Ugh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyway, it's really cool that you can apply these. So if I went to the top here and just hit Alt Enter, I can add my file. Ma oh, no, that's not it. Do, 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 do. Header. Insert standard header. There we go. It's a command. See? Ah, yes. Using that global search sweetness. Yep. So that's a really easy way you can add this mm -hmm. to a bunch of files, or they'll be added automatically like to mm -hmm. your templates, which I love. Yep. I can't wait to get it. And you can do that on a per solution basis as well, because solutions normally have different requirements for file headers. Right. Pretty cool. Um, OK, very last thing to call out, custom snippets. Ah, yes. I am a little bit snippet obsessed. <laughs> it's fine. I don't have a problem. <laughs> um, they're so underused for how uh, useful they are. Let's see, it's an environment. There it is, sorry, it is in text editor. So you can add all of these custom code snippets into your code, and you can also add ones and create a uh, completely, like create one on your own and add um, different properties with which you can um, insert them. So um, earlier with, uh, who was I speaking with? Oh yeah, Dan. Uh, we were talking about how to add properties by just typing a name and hitting prop or tab tab. 
and it automatically inserts it. And you can see a lot of the snippets that you have in IntelliSense, mm -hmm. which is probably more of the editor goodness that we share across um, IDs. Probably, yeah. <laughs> Pretty cool. Um, yeah, yeah. So a lot, a lot of these snippets have like short, short names that you just type that, then tab, tab. But there's a bunch more snippets that don't have those short names that you can access with the insert snippet command. Ooh. Um, which is in which edit. Which I could probably find in insert snippet, and that does not have a key binding. Ah, so it's one of those hidden ones that we were talking about earlier. Yes. Cool, I'll have to check that out. Mm -hmm. Michaela, do you have some favorite features you want to show off? Some favorite features? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I do. So if we could switch over, switch to, over to my display. Machine. Yes. I can okay. see editor guide. Is editor guidelines your first So one? we're going to go back into, into preferences. Oh, and right now, my editor is set up with the default settings. Um, but if you go into the editor settings um, here, you can see that there's a whole bunch of options. So word wrap, super useful, um, uh -huh. and show glyph. So it shows a, li a little marker where a line's been wrapped. Um, I love to turn that one on. There was a good six month period where I thought mm -hmm. VS for Mac had word wrap and Visual Studio for Windows didn't. <laughs> and I was like really bitter, but then someone showed it to me in Windows. Yeah. So both have them. <laughs> yeah, Which yeah. Awesome. Yeah, well, when features are, are are off by default. For a lot of people, they might as well not exist. I um, know. So well, yeah, it's, um, it's so yeah. hard to choose defaults. We can't please everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, so a lot of these used to be turned off, and we turned them on because people just weren't weren't finding them. And they are super useful. So for example, the hi the highlight cur current line, and you can see here that these actually preview um, live. Wait, where did the column rule go? I guess. I guess some issues with that preview mm -hmm. there, but um, yeah. So the column, so the column ruler is is super is super useful. So if your files are set to have a particular length, you can you can turn on the column ruler, which if your files are set to be say 120 characters wide, that'll show at your 120 characters, so that you know that's the size that people who work on your solution are expecting to display it. So you don't create lines that are overly long and they mm -hmm. have to scroll, si scroll sideways. Way, when people are reviewing them, they don't yell at you yes. for not being <laughs> compliant with their monitor setup, which has happened mm -hmm. to me. Yeah. I was very sad. That's when yep. I cannot wait to get in Visual Studio. We do have a good extension for it, though. It's called Editor Guidelines. And that, and that size is an editor config setting. So. It's per, oh, per repo, so cool. per file type. <laughs> um, yeah, another one that um, one that's one that's actually off by default that I like to turn on is if we go into markers and rulers, there's show invisible characters. So there's always, and then if I go and reopen my file, I'm not sure why there is an update. You'll see you can see where spaces and new lines and there's little markers showing like you like, what type of new line. Um, so you can actually see the difference between like Windows and and um, Unix uh, new lines there. Oh, nice. um, but um, I don't I don't personally like that because it's a lot of like visual noise. Sure, um, but like as a learning tool, well, especially for people trying to do formatting like white space formatting mm -hmm. for the first time, and they're like writing an automated email or something mm -hmm. in their first C sharp. Yeah. I was there once and, and managing that. That'll be so useful. Well, there is a compromise between on and off, Ooh. which is only show it uh, in, oh, where's my mouse? Not, there we go. Only show it in selection. So only showing it in the selection is, is super neat. Oh, let's zoom in. Because you don't get that noise the whole time, but then if you want to see, what the line endings are wow. in a portion of code, you can just select it. So it gives you a kind of cleaner experience, but you still have that functionality um, super straightforward to get to. Um, and there's one more thing that I want to show off um, in preferences, which is um, namespace policies. So you can be super opinionated with the way that your files directories correspond to the namespaces. Um, so you can choose whether um, whether your file's namespaces are based on the directory you, you put them in, and you can choose whether that includes the default the default name namespace as the root, then adds on the nested folder names, or just adds on the directory structure. So cool. Does this change how the um, Test Explorer displays namespaces and um, test groups by 
namespace? I don't think it does, no. I just but have maybe a request should. coming up maybe for that. Jeff was actually just telling me I need to add like nested namespaces as one of our mm -hmm. how we show things in a directory. And you can also do this per solution as well. So if you uh, go into solution options, which so cool. uh, yeah, or even per project, and you, you can get to other things like the, sta the, the standard header you can set mm -hmm. per solution um, right there. So many lovely options to explore. Yep. It's just yeah. a smooth experience. Very cool. So it's a good example of how like sometimes obviously Visual Studio for Mac has developed a lot of features almost like ahead of time, but it's mm -hmm. just because you were listening to your developers and what they most needed right away. Mm -hmm. And that means that um, what features land in what will be a little bit different. Um, and overall, it's good for us because you get to test new designs. And once they're perfect, I get to steal them. So mm -hmm. <laughs> it's yeah. pretty nice. Yeah. And there's certain things that are kind of expectations on Mac that aren't expect expected on Windows. But if people really, really like them on Mac and then are also using Windows and sharing their solutions across platforms, and they're like, we want it there too. Mm -hmm. um, Creates that's, more pressure. That's really good feedback <laughs> to have. And we can kind of yeah learn from the other platforms. Absolutely. Um, anything else you want to show off? Extensions? Extensions, yes. Extensions Extensions are super cool. There's not as many of them as there are um, on Windows or on VS Code. Um, but uh, yeah, there's, there's quite a few of them. So there's ext extensions for things like um, Vim, um, key, key binding support. Um, there's extensions to style your XAML, or to um, there's an extension that uh, that gives you a PowerShell um, uh, shell for NuGet packages, like you have on Windows. It's yeah. not built in, but you can you install the extension manager. and 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 add that. Um, there's also one for MS Build in, te in Telesense, for for example. So there's a there's a whole bunch, and um, yeah. They aren't going to be as good an experience as a core product, um, but uh, there's lots of really great functionality hidden out there. Um. Very cool. Um, so the last thing I want to call out is um, we actually created a new doc just for exploring all of these keyboard shortcuts that we just mentioned. Um, so if we flip on over to my screen, Kendra's screen, Kendra's screen. Um, you can use aka.ms slash vsm dash keys. And this is actually a PDF, so you can print it out and you can save it wherever you need. Um, it'll be embedded in our docs pretty soon here, and it'll list out all of the Visual Studio for Mac keyboard shortcuts as a quick reference. Mm -hmm. And if that's not good enough, um, as part of this event, you might have noticed on the corner of our tables, we have these lovely mugs. Upon these mugs are keyboard shortcuts <laughs> for Visual Studio for Mac. So if you forget what they are and you're, you like hot beverages, you, mm -hmm. you might just have them right in your hands yeah. at you'll, your fingertips. You'll literally see them every time you take a sip of coffee. Boom. So I was actually giving a talk, and I forgot what the toggle line comment was. And it is command slash, command forward slash even. So I wish I had had this with mm -hmm. me. It really would have saved my butt. There is an easy way to remember that one, though, which oh. is that slash is the comment. Yeah. So. But <laughs> I don't expect things to be intuitive. No, and most, <laughs> most, most of them are not that memorable, to be fair. <laughs> OK. Well, now that I feel bad about myself, no. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining. Um, I have a quick slide of resources. So you can check out our doc. It's Mac Features 2019. So you can use that Productivity Features app. And you can check out our new Visual Studio for Mac uh, keyboard shortcuts all in PDF form. I guess now we'll go over to questions. Questions. Are there questions? Great, great uh, session. Uh, all about key bindings, all about productivity, all about, you know, I love the mugs, by the way. I need, I need to have a few. And in fact, if you stay around for the code party, which I will uh, mention in a bit, you get a chance to win your own special mug. Right. So a couple of questions before we uh, announce the party. Uh, first of all, can I uh, break a build if the editor config settings are not what they're supposed to be? Like, if my team is not abiding to the rules, can we break the build? Mm -hmm. uh, we can. Um, so the same as on Windows, that'll work if you have your analyzers installed as a NuGet package. It won't work for the ones that are built into the ID itself right now, but we're working on, 
Oh, We're working on having yeah. everything built into the IDE delivered as a NuGet package. I wasn't sure. I know you can break your build if you're building via the command line. I wasn't mm -hmm. sure if that is the same build that VS through Mac is using. Ultimately. Yeah, it still goes Surely. through the MS okay. build build engine. So you engine. still get the build yeah. output. Yep. That's screaming. Good. Yep. Good. <laughs> There you have it. So you can actually uh, enforce your rules. So if you want to have a specific code style for your team and make sure that everyone follows it, editor.config is for you. Next one is, what are my theming options for VS for Mac? And do you have a favorite? Um, yeah, I do. So, um, so you can theme the entire um, IDE um, to use a light theme or dark theme. Um, I usually use. Um, dark myself, it doesn't necessarily show up so well on presentation, so I switched back. Um, but my, fa my favorite part, part of that um, is actually a Mac OS system setting, which is if you go into system mm -hmm. preferences here, you can, in general, you can set your highlight color. So you can set a little accent color. Oh, and, yeah, the and, pink. Yeah, and so you'll <laughs> notice that if you, if you bring up um, in IntelliSense, that will actually use your accent color. Oh and so there's a bunch of little places where it just brings your accent color in. So that black and pink, oh, big fan of that. That makes me smile. OK. <laughs> there's also a whole bunch of, of, um, of editor themes um, as well. And you can install your own, too, if you find those elsewhere. Oh, there they are. And those like live preview, so you can see exactly what they look like. Mm -hmm. I use Solarize Dark for my Notepad++ theme because Sometimes you still need Notepad++ for things. Ah, and, yes. Oh, man. It, it's a warm spot in my heart. <laughs> I am a big fan of Monokai. Mm -hmm. It's an older theme, but still good. <laughs> <laughs> Oldie, but a goodie. Guess what? I love the pink and the purple. And having two girls <laughs> that uh, I hope and uh, I aspire for them to be developers, it's already set for them. Pink Aww. and purple in my ID. One last question. Uh, can I, since I use VS for Mac at home and at uh, work, and I'm fortunate to have two different machines, is there a way for me to sync my settings so I don't have to set them every single time? So there isn't a built-in sync mechanism, but you can find those preferences files in your library folder and copy those back and forth. Mm. Um, so it's kind of a bit, it's kind of a bit of a, like secret hack right now. But if you set up say OneDrive and then you symlink to those to your OneDrive, you could have them directly mirror across. God, I love those little hacks. That's amazing. Right. OK. Uh, thanks, Kendra and Michaela. That was an amazing session. So many little tips and tricks that you can pick up and you know, know how to make yourself more productive. I want everybody to stay around. And in fact, you should switch to Twitch, because at 2.30, we're actually going to uh, host our code party. Uh, we have amazing sponsors uh, that are giving out a ton of free stuff. We have the mugs. We have t-shirts. So stick around, and we'll see you uh, very shortly after the break. Thank you.